you brought your Bibles to open them to the book of Acts. The other thing I wanted to mention was that there are flyers. If you'd like to invite people to the concert, you're welcome to. You know, I prayed a lot about what to share with you tonight. And at the beginning of August, I went to a conference. And sometimes when I go to a conference, I just would give anything if I could have had you all go there with me. I wish I could just pick you up and part you and nobody's schedules interfere. The whole world came. Amen? And since I couldn't do that, I brought the DVD to you. And since it's a two-hour service, I can only show you about 20 minutes, okay, maybe 30 at the most. Are we good with that? Yeah. Now, the other part is, I believe that these are the last days. If you read what the Bible says, and you say, oh, that's scary, oh, no, that's wonderful. That means that all the injustice and turmoil and heartache that we have lived with for so many centuries is about to end, and there will come a millennium when our Lord Jesus Christ will rule for a thousand years on earth. That would be much better. Amen? Yeah. So for a Christian to say these are the last days is a mar marvelous thing. That's not a lack of hope. That is our hope. His coming is our hope. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Now, the Bible talks specifically about what the last days will be like. Okay, so I'm like, I'm right with you with the kids. I ask them, do you believe Jesus is here because he's dead, right? And that's why we worship. I hope they got it. Now, and you do know something, too. Every so often, you see little breakthroughs. They're starting to get it. God loves us. Go to Acts 1. We can agree that the Lord Jesus... We're going to read from the New King James tonight. We can agree that the Lord Jesus Christ himself is the authority, right? All right, we're reading 1-3. To these... He, Jesus, also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Now, this is after he has been raised from the dead about 40 days later. He just read in the same chapter, he gets caught up to heaven. Verse 4. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Which he said you heard from me. Now, what is the promise of the Father? Next verse. For John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, he's, this is what happened. Pentecost was 50 days after Passover. This is 40 days after Passover because in the same chapter, he gets caught up. And we agree on that. So this is 40 days. So 10 days before Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, he said in verse 4, I want you to go to Jerusalem, do not leave, until you receive. Being assembled together with them, he and his disciples, he commanded them, don't leave until the promise of the Father comes. Wait for the promise of the Father that I told you about. Next verse. <clears throat> for John baptized with water, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why didn't they get baptized right then? Because... The coming of the Holy Spirit was the fulfillment of the Feast of Pentecost. When he died on Passover, how many of you know Jesus died on Passover, right? It was the fulfillment of Passover. He was, do you see, he had to die on Passover. I can show you scripture after scripture, we had time. He had to die on Passover because he was our great Passover land. Passover was simply the foretelling of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Agree? Yes. Pentecost, the, fe the feast of first was, was the foretelling of the coming of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So second, and you say, why are you hammering on this? Because these are the last days, and I want you to know what Jesus said it'd be like in the last days. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Acts 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise, like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speaking in their own language. Now was tongues a real language? Yes, yes they were each hearing them in their own language. 
Paul said, we speak with, if, even if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, sometimes when you speak in tongues, you speak with a no language. John Broughton, our missionary to India, was, was preaching once and began to speak in tongues. And a guy came up to him and said, where did you learn that obscure dialect? He said, I didn't even know you spoke any Indian language. He said, I don't. He said, oh no, you were speaking perfectly. And, and he gave him the, the name of the language. Now, this has been documented over and over. John Osteen, who is Joel Osteen's father, was speaking once. And a fellow came up and said that was the most beautiful Hebrew I've ever heard. Who taught you? And he began to speak to him in Hebrew. And John said, I wish I knew Hebrew, but I don't. He said, you do too. You were speaking Hebrew. And he said, no, sir, I'm speaking other tongues. And the Holy Spirit chose for that to be Hebrew. So we see from this passage that it can be a known human language. It can also be an angelic language that the devil does not understand. Okay? Because you're speaking in code. You're praying out sometimes. Okay? Let's keep going. Verse 12. They all continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying, what does this mean? Now, I'd like to point out to you that that is the reaction of much of the church today when people get filled with the Holy Spirit. They're amazed, and they say, what in the world does this mean? And others were mocking, saying they're full of sweet wine. Now, would you say that those people on the street observing knew what this was, or would you say that God Almighty through Peter knew what it was when he quotes the Old Testament? How many of you would be willing to accept the Old Testament explanation that, of, what Peter's, of what's going on here? Okay, let's keep reading. But Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea, and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give each of my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose. Question. Did they suppose wrong? Everybody, hey, come on. Who are you guys? Are, are you all out there? Did they suppose wrong? Yeah, everybody say they suppose wrong. They suppose wrong. Now, what you say, maybe I suppose wrong. When I first heard about the baptism, I suppose way wrong. Oh. All right, let's keep going. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. But this is that. Now, question. Would Peter, evidently under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, know what this was? Yes, the answer to that is yes. Okay, okay. It shall be in the last days, verse 17, it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit on all mankind or all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, if we go to a church, or I go to church, I grew up in a church, where there weren't any young men seeing visions and there weren't any old men dreaming dreams. We didn't prophesy. If somebody tried to prophesy, we didn't put them away. Give them a ticket to the funny form. But the Lord said that in the last days, he would pour out his spirit. Is that not so? Okay. Let's keep reading. Verse 18. Even on my spawn slaves, both men and women, I will pour in those days pour forth of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Verse 19, I, I will stop it, we'll stop it. Joel chapter 2, verse 28, 29 said the same thing. You want to see the scripture Peter quoted? Peter said, it will come about after this that I will pour, excuse me, Joel said, it will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your men will dream dreams, your old men, and your young men will see visions. Even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit on those days. Now the one thing I didn't ask, but when it talked about the promise of the Father, when he said, you wait for the promise of the Father, back in Acts chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, it was very clear. What was the promise of the Father? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, another question. If it was the promise of the Father, excuse me, Katrina, I'm talking. Thank you. If it was the promise of the Father, was it good? Yes. Yes. All right, what were the conditions? If you go back to Acts 1, 12 to 14, they were in harmony. And they were praying. And specifically, they were praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, now please please listen to this thought. If we are in the last days, tell me, I mean, you don't have to raise your hand. You don't believe, if you believe, or do you believe we are in the last days? Every, okay. If we are in the last days, then the, unquestionably, the Lord is poised to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Yes. Amen? Because that's what he said, Joel and Acts. He never says it without fulfilling it. Now, what were the characteristics of the people who received that first infilling of the Holy Spirit? 
Number one, they were in unity. They weren't fighting. Number two, they were praying. And number three, they were praying specifically for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to see that these were the exact, for a number of years, all the way through the centuries, you can find a person here and there that spoke in tongues. If you will get the book, Beyond Their Younger Room, from Kenneth Hagen, in our bookstore, we sell it, it costs awesome book. He met missionaries who came back from the field. They were sent out by denominations that didn't believe in the baptism, and they were so desperate. This one woman said, after two years there, I was so desperate. I said, God, if you don't give me more help than this, I'm going home. And this is 100 years ago. When going home didn't mean getting on a plane and then getting on a ship and going back home in failure. And as she began to pray, God baptized her, and she began to pray, and she had no clue. For 20 years, every night, she prayed in tongues. Because she felt the strength. It says, he who prays in a tongue edifies himself. And when she heard Brother Hagen speak on it, she said, that's what happened to me. I didn't know what it was. It's probably a good thing because my denomination told me it wasn't God. But all through the centuries, there have been people who have been divinely healed. But Martin Luther got his closest cohort in the faith. He, he, he helped him with theology and he was dying as a young man and Martin Luther got that man healed because he insisted on it. All through the centuries there have been a person here and a person there. In the 1200s my dad showed me documents of where people who spoke in tongues, a little pop with a David Groom I can't remember the document. Don't quote me that. I can find the name. But anyhow, all through. Listen, there was never a mighty little God until Azusa Street in 1906. Now I want to read you uh, some facts about the Azusa Street Revival. The Azusa Street Revival was a historic Pentecostal revival that took place in 1906 in Los Angeles, and it was led by William Seymour, an African-American preacher. In 1905, he came from Charles Parham School, and I'm trying to make this really short, he went to L.A. Within two days, he was preaching at this one church. They disagreed with him, and she locked him out. He was invited to a home to pray. None of them spoke in tongues yet, and yet God had made it so real to them that they got together for a few weeks praying to, to specifically to pray. Here's what it says. White families from the local holiness churches began attending as well. Now this... This was a huge breakthrough. There was no interracial services, but white families and black families began meeting together. The group would pray regularly to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit on April 9, 1906, five weeks after he began preaching and praying. And three days into an extended 10 day fast, Edward E. S. Lee spoke in tongues. Two days later, the lady who became his wife spoke, and then finally, the man who was preaching about it got it. Okay, here's my point. They were in unity, they were praying, and they were specifically seeking the baptism, like an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, identical to the day of Pentecost. Now, here's what's interesting. It's very well documented that these great forefathers said that about 100 years later, there would come a second great group of God that would be greater than the Azusa Street. Now, the Azusa Street revival went around the world. 600 million people today are filled with the Holy Spirit, attend churches that believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I wanted you to see that in at the book of Acts chapter 2, it was a gospel pour out of the Spirit on all flesh. Let me ask you this. Is salvation at this moment available to every human being on earth? Absolutely. Does that mean that every human being on earth has received it? No. Is God going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh? Absolutely. Who received it in Acts chapter 2? Those who were looking for Him. Amen? In Azusa Street, those who were looking for Him. Now, I, um, you know, I went back and forth about whether they show part of this video or not. Then this is when I decided. Every church must decide who they are after and who they're going to place. Every church has a target audience. Yeah. We have just decided that we are going to go after God and going to please God. Yeah. If things are going to change, now, at the beginning of this video, a lady has spoken in tongues and he's prophesied. And you might say, why does the Lord keep, well, the Lord is never static. 
And when the Lord wanted to get Jesus into the earth, he had to prophesy this. He was prophesied so much in the Old Testament that it finally came to a culmination. Jesus was born. And that wasn't the end. A lot of times people say, well, that, what if they had said that Malachi is all we need? No, we, now we don't believe any extra biblical prophecy measures up to this. This is the canonized perfect Lord of God. But God is still speaking because God is still changing. And God is getting ready to move again. And I believe that when he spoke, and I guess it was about the 8th of August that day, through Mark Hankins, applies to you. And you say, yeah, but I wasn't there that night. No, I, I was. And I was getting all kinds of stuff. But you know what? I wasn't there the day of Pentecost. But when I read those words, they're for me because God is no respecter of persons. Do you yeah. understand? Pentecost is not necessarily socially acceptable in the book of Acts. In L.A., they, they printed stuff in the newspapers I wouldn't even repeat about. And you say, well, why in the world would you be willing to be associated with God? According to the Bible, that was God that day. According to the Bible, those who received got more of God. Uh, the reason, I'll tell you why. I don't care about pastor church. I do want the most of God I can get. And in this service, God came down. And of all, have you ever felt close to heaven? Before you feel like heaven is just like a quarter of an inch away. That night, I felt, Dad Hagen used to say this. I got to bring it up so you can see the part of the video. Dad Hagen used to say this. Sometimes in seeking God, I get close, so close to God, I feel like I'm closer to him than I am to earth, and I almost think I can't get back. I start to get scared because I think it's not time for me to go or read the my wife needs me. And he's so far out there, he can't get back. We were so close to heaven that night. I felt like it would have been easier to go into heaven than to stay here. And he said, oh, that's scary. Well, let me tell you one little teeny secret that I know about you. If you already had all of God that you wanted, there's plenty of churches that are happy on the social level. That's not bad. You can get to heaven in those churches. The reason you're here tonight is because you really want more God. It's the only reason you come to this church. You don't come to this church because everybody says, oh, this could be, you know, it's cool to go to some churches, and it's not cool to go to other churches. And you say, don't you want to be cool? Yeah, I want to be cool in his sight. Yeah. So I'm going to show you what, just keep an open mind. This might be God. And if, at the times when he says, just pray a little bit, just pray a little bit. The best, you know how you're going to get answers from God? Sometimes you get them from through the top word, but sometimes you get a face to face in this process. Go ahead and show Brian a video. For the word of the Lord has come unto you, and you have heard his voice. And you have heard clearly even the part and the thing that you must do. That you lift your voice and you will not be silent and you will not be still. But you lift your voice with authority. And your voice goes all the way up into heaven. All changing things and rearranging things. And opening up heaven and the glory of God. And the hand of the Lord it shall rest upon you in a new way in this season and in this hour. For I'll clothe you with strength and clothe you with power. Even in the place that you once were weak, now, saith the Lord, I'm making you strong. Even the things that seemed that they were wrong, now, saith the Lord, I'll make it right. For I'll strengthen you to fight this faith fight. For I am the author and the finisher of your faith. And the good work I have begun, saith the Lord, I will bring it to full completion. So you can laugh in the face of the enemy and boldly declare the promises of God and the word of the Lord and let it come out of your mouth with boldness and let it come out with strength for these are the things that I have promised and I will go to any length saith the Lord to bring it to pass in your life and no enemy shall be able to stand in your way for this is the time saith the Lord it is your day it's the day of the Lord and you'll rejoice in it for the glory of God shall be revealed in this new season and in this new hour and I'll strengthen you with mighty power. So declare the faithfulness of God in what he has done and is doing for you and what he is doing in you and the new things he will do through you, saith the Lord. So recognize this season and lift your voice 
in the morning and lift your voice in the evening. And as you lift your voice, then the enemy and strategies of the enemy shall be broken and shall be left in disarray. And you shall step forth, saith the Lord, into a brand new day.
demonstration of the Spirit in this time and in this final hour. So recognize the Holy Spirit and He will clothe you and clothe you with boldness and clothe you with joy and clothe you in this season and equip you to do all He has called you to do. So do not deny it and do not speak of your own life, but declare the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and He has anointed me for I place some of my honor upon you, saith the Lord. And you'll walk in that honor and walk in that favor and walk in that glory. So recognize this season and changes now, saith the Lord. You are being changed. Changed and the glory of God shall be revealed in you and through you now. Ah. Well, lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Just tell the Lord, go ahead and dress me up. For some of these things I have spoken to you about many years ago. And I'll bring to your remembrance the things that I've spoken to you. And even the visions and the dreams and the things that you have seen. And they have not all come to pass up to this point. But now is a season for fulfillment and for performance. And the dream, it shall come to pass. And you'll walk into it as if walking into a new room. As going through a new door. As going into a new season. You'll even say things seem different now. And I'm different now. Oh, it is not your own ability or your own doing. But it is my word and my grace, saith the Lord. The Spirit of God Himself shall work a new work in you. And that work in you shall strengthen you and equip you and enable you to step in to the office or offices I have called you to function in. I have that office prepared for you even before you were born. I called you and I ordained you. So do not say I am too young for this and do not say I'm too old for this and do not say I don't have what it takes for this. But declare this is the word of the Lord and the Holy Spirit himself shall open that door and you'll enter into as it were a new office and a new phase, a new phase, a new phase of what I've called you to do. So it's time for you to step up in an ever widening circle to go far out beyond and enter into this yes. new phase and be faithful in this new phase and humble yourself under the hand of the Lord for now the anointing shall come in a great measure and you'll walk circumspectly before the Lord understanding what the will of the Lord is and you'll be more accurate in the things I've called you to do and I'll put you in the right place at the right time. So recognize this season as a new day and walk carefully before the Lord and even knowing that the fire of God burning within you these things have been ordained for many years and now they shall come to pass. <laughs> Praise God. Well, lift your hands and lift your voice. How does she go? How does she break or something? Palabares telebe. Come on, just lift your voice and praise the Lord. Palabrian no mo sangalavise. Se barongo de le bangani se bronas. Gore bancande revisha para so. Bless the Lord. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Trenton, can you come? Just come and sing. We just we can sing a cappella if they can't get it. Come and sing. Great is thy faithfulness. Just worship the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Father. 
I saw in the spirit while we were singing. I saw angels descending from the throne, and I saw houses, and I saw the angels descending all around these houses and all above these houses. And I saw angels descending upon churches. I don't know who, whose church or where they were, but I saw angels descending. And they were not only above and around, but I saw the angels entering into the doors of the churches. And I heard them shout and say, this is a new season. This is a new time. For I am ready to move in the greatness of my power that I have prophesied in the holy scriptures about. And it shall come to be right in your very home and in your very children and your very families and in your very churches there will be a display of power that you have not yet experienced but you shall walk into the glory of my power for the angels of God have been sent to assist you and it shall come to pass saith the Lord Just thank the Lord, angels, ministering spirits. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. A new day, a new season. <laughs> a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost. I'm blowing across this generation. <laughs> There's people in this room right now who have had a spirit of heaviness for so long, you've almost given up hope of ever getting rid of that heavy spirit. And he says, you've asked me repeatedly, how can I get rid of this depression and this heaviness? And he says, if you will let me fill you with my spirit of joy and my precious, mighty Holy Spirit, that spirit of heaviness will leave forever. And you will not have to chase it away. You just receive him and he will chase it away. And I know there's people, there's at least three or four people here tonight, and from what I know in my heart, that have had a real heaviness, and it's not really your own fault, you just haven't been able to get rid of it. But, you know, whether you want to receive the baptism or not, I encourage you to let us pray for you, because heaviness rubs all the joy out of life, even when things are well. Things are not well when your heart is heavy and you don't know why. And so anybody would like us to pray for that, and if you want to receive the baptism, all I can tell you is my own personal experience that I went from being melancholy and morose and introverted to knowing the living God and finding it. And I, I know that right now, God, but we're going to turn the tape back up. If you need to slip out and leave, that's fine. But there's certain people, man, this is your night. This is your night to get rid of all the, this like a, it's like a blackness. It's like a veil of a lace black. It's like you wear lace black mourning inside all the time. And, you, and you're not really sure who you're grieving because you're grieving. And God said, I'll take that away if you'll come and let the, let the saints pray.